Hello everyone, hey this is Bill. Uh, today I am going to go over the instructions on how to assemble the booster. This is a long awaited uh, video and product. If there are any suggestions for this video, please leave them below and I would be glad to address those and even remake this if, if need be. But uh, for now, um, we'll go over this. Um, hopefully it's straightforward, hopefully it's easy to do. And uh, anyway, uh, it should work out pretty well. I will go from unassembled to working booster in this video. So it'll be a complete install. Some of the kits are being sold as just the, um, the kit um, without all the components and that you will be able to source for yourself the, your own motors and your own gears and your own rollers and all that kind of stuff or you can buy the kit that has the components in it like this one that you see here so it's going to come with an electronics package and it's going to come with a materials package and then also all the wood all right those are the two types of uh, sets or kits that we're going to be sending out the tools needed for this assembly um, are primarily the glue Again, we use the Instacure, uh, excuse me, the, the Bob Smith Industries CA glue, but it can be any CA glue that you, whatever brand you guys like and whatever you use, uh, but this works out really well. Um, all of this stuff will be, all of the stuff in this video will be listed below with links to where you can get these. And then also uh, the Instacure, this is really handy. This is an aerosol one. You can also get a pump one. And so though that's going to be very handy. Those two are probably the most important parts of this build. But there are the tools that we're going to use too. Just a regular set of pliers. We've got a small and a medium sized screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver. We've got a 1.5, a 2.0, and a 4.0 uh, millimeter uh, Allen wrenches. These are not required, but could be very handy to use, and that's the clamps when we assemble this. The kit will come with these items that you see here, and um, we'll get into the build. So here we go. All right, I'm going to clear the tools off to the side. And we'll start with the pieces. This is the primary piece right here. And this is the base of everything. So as you can see, there's a single track piece in the middle of it here. And then we're going to build around that track piece um, to create the booster. And so the very first thing we're going to do is assemble the rails for the track. Everything is numbered from 1 to 13. And some of them are numbered like 11A and 11B. Um, that's just the order in which to do them, but they're kind of the same piece on the same item. That's why they've done. It. That's why I've done it that way. And then, um, anyways, we just follow the numbers pretty much. Uh, for example, here's number one. So number one's right here, and um, there's number one on my uh, list. I've set this out so that I could read all the numbers that are kind of facing me here, and this just makes it easier to to do. But Pretty much we're going to just be building this um, right here like this and so we'll apply some glue and this is this part of the build is just like making the track uh, the straight tracks and I'm just gonna put this in here and they're nice and tight so you'll need to push real good to get them going but it was just like the track probably go okay so there's one and then let's do number two again matching the numbers we're gonna put them together
Well, that one's tight. They won't always this tight. At least they shouldn't be. All right. Okay. So there we go. The straight track is right here. And then now we're going to build around it. All right. So the next item we're going to work on is... Um, so we've done one and two, so we go on to number three. This will be number three item here. Now there's a couple things. There's a 3A and a 3B. So this is a 3A and the 3B is down here. So I need to add this piece to this unit and then add this to here. And um, on this particular one, this is the only one that we have this rule. You'll see above this right here, I don't know if that's focused or not, right here there's a V up and a V down all that tells me is that on this particular one I need to install this item on the back side of it right here so we're gonna stick it in here and let me get some glue on it and we'll install it Stick it in. All right. So there's two of these that we're going to put in. They're both a little tight, and that's for a reason. I needed this to be pretty much square. So, anyways, there we go. That should be that should be ready to go. All right, and now we'll do 3B, which goes right in here, and I'll add some glue. And we'll place that in. And just push down nice and tight. We're now on to number four. Put some glue on him. And it goes down in here. Okay. Just make sure we're getting them in there. This looks good. They should be pretty much flush with the bottom. Uh, anytime we put anything in here, it should be flush. So I was just checking to make sure that was the case. So there's... That was number four, and number five is over here. So I'll put some glue on it. These are gonna be where we put the, the bearings for the axle. Okay, and now we're to number six. Now this is number six right here and here and we're gonna put this guy up in this position here now not only does he have spots in the bottom down here that interconnect but also along this ridge that will fit into these uh, sections so let's glue her up and so we'll just put this piece in like such and then if you like you can also put some along the face here which is going to um, help and then also along this right here and, oops it's in right here I'm gonna wipe that one off okay so now we'll just put it in have to line these guys up so they fit. There we go. And just want to make sure they all fit in nice and tight. And this is why it would be good to have a pair of these. Just so you can 
make sure this is all nice and tight. And then hit it with some spray, some Instacure. And then that should that should work pretty good and hold it in place. All right, so now we're on to number seven, which is right here. So we'll match up the sevens. And then we have one, two, three, and four positions that are need to match up. And so we'll just need to make sure we get those all aligned. And then we put that in. Pretty much slide it in straight. Again, pushing in tight, make sure everything goes together nice and tight. I'll put some more of this on. Okay, that should be good. I'll put another one over here. That should be good. And then just make sure this these tops are on here and that they're tight. And then hit that with some spray. And that should allow it to um, cure real quick and be ready to go to the next step. All right, so that was seven. Now we go to eight. And over here we have another one of these that has an 8A and an 8B. Now, if you remember on 3A, we had to go on the other side, but this one we don't. This one we're going to go into the front side like this. Okay, so let's get some, get some glue on it. And then just stick your own in. Again, these guys, unlike some of the others, well, these are pretty tight. I mean, I might even use this to squish it down a little bit. Okay. Anyways, there we go. That piece is there. I'm going to spray it. And now let's go on to the next one. And this, this guy is going to slide into the end, but we need to put some glue on it. All right. Cool. Just slide that in. There we go, that was a nice pop. There we 
we go. And we'll let that cure up a bit. Give it a spray. All right, so that was eight. And now we need to go to nine. I'm gonna set this aside over here and then bring in the next group of items to build. Now this is the uh, the motor mount where we're gonna install the motor on. And there will be different versions of the motor mount um, depending on the size of the motor. This is the 380 motor mount, um, which is gonna come with the kits I make. Anyways, these there'll be different motor mounts that uh, depending on the size of motor that is going to be used. But right now this 380 is the standard. The motor we're using is a six is three volt to six volt um, motor that is uh, just pretty generic and we're gonna we hook it up. Our power supply is going to be a six volt three amp power supply to this. All right and then so this is number nine and there's number nine right there. We're gonna just glue this right in there like that. So let me get some glue on it. And then get some glue there. Okay. And then we're going to do pretty much the same thing over here is we're going to be gluing this piece into here. And we just want to make sure all those pieces are going to fit. Let's get some glue on it. Pressing real hard to make sure everything goes in and gets aligned. Now the motor mount is going to have a couple different things. Um, it's going to be used, um, the motor is going to be able to move inside the box back and forth so that the pinion gear can adjust against the drive gear. And I'll show you how that all works. But this right now, one of the things is we're going to put um, a screw through the outside of the box, a spring, and then a nut right here. And this is the nut retainer. We're just going to slide it in like that. And so let me make sure. There we go. So you should see something like that. when you. And it's just a simple glue on piece. So, like that. All right, that's our motor mount. We'll get the motor installed in a moment. All right, so that was nine and 10. And now we're gonna do 11 and 12, uh, or 11 anyways. So um, there's 11A, which is here, and 11B, which is here. Pretty much these two pieces are gonna go in like this and then they're gonna you know get glued so let's get those taken care of Okay, and then on this piece here, you notice there, there's a hole and another screw is going to come from the outside of the box through here and is going to 
hold this in place. And this is a retainer for the drive shaft and we'll show you how that works. But for now, we'll set that to the side. Okay, and now we're gonna go on to number 12, which is this guy and he's just gonna mount there. I'll take this off and just gonna slide him on like so. Okay, and we'll put some glue on him. it at the right distance and we'll glue him and we'll give it a spray This is the, the roof part that's going to go on. I was just making sure that this was spaced properly. All right, we'll set that aside and we'll now do these. These are our bearing holders and there's four pieces to each one and we'll get started with, with these. Uh, pretty much we're just going to be putting in uh, a little guide here and then adding the others to it so that they stay nice and straight. All right, let's get that out of there. Get some glue on it. Make sure it's flush. Looks good. All right, um, the middle one is more narrow than the others, if you can see that. And so we're going to put that goes in the center. Uh, we'll just get some glue. And this just glues up with a couple like this. And we'll put just a little bit in here for the center piece. And then it gets pushed all the way to the back. Uh, there we go. And down. So, pretty much just make sure that you get these all aligned, that this gets pushed all the way in to there. And we're going to do the same thing with this last piece here. And we'll just stick her on right. Well, these pieces won't be this tight when you get it. I don't know why they're so tight right now. Okay, there we go. And then this is going to be for our bearings will go in here. And so there's two of these to be made. I'll just make the others real quick. All right, now these are done. And let's go back to our box. All right, so pretty much we have our box built. We have the internal components built. Now it's time to start assembling with all the uh, pieces here. Okay, now we're gonna start with the parts package. So you'll open that up, pour out the contents, Take care of that real quick. All right. Here's our drive shaft. Um, here's um, the roller, some bearings, 
our gears. We've got a pinion gear and we've got a drive gear. We have some uh, nuts and bolts, a little bit of a spring there, and so forth. And see these items will be used now to assemble uh, together. And we'll just start with this. We'll just put our bearings in here and they should fit in tight. Just make sure you get them all the way in there. They'll, they'll, they'll sit a little proud, but that should be about right. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's just a little bit of them sticking out. And we do that for both bearings like that. Okay. And then this is our shaft will go through there and they're going to get mounted in here. I'll show you how that's done in a second. All right, and then also we'll open up the electronics bag to get our motor out so we can get that mounted. All right. All right, so here's our motor. Uh, it's a generic three, 380 motor, and um, we're going to be installing that onto this piece right here. And that's done with these little guys little screws right there and what I'll show you how to do that so I made the holes fairly tight so that these will actually screw into if you can see the little tiny hole right there you screw in and you have to screw it in and then when it gets to the end it's going to get real tight just keep screwing until it strips through all right and that's we want to do that on purpose so here we go again we're going to do that all right and then we'll take our motor and line up the motor has one and two threaded section uh, threaded holes in it we're going to line those up with our screws And get those started, and then just thread them in. Until we're tight. Now, you'll want to go fairly tight, but don't over stress it. When you hear it start to bind. It's probably plenty tight. And there you go. Now our motor is mounted in here. Let's go ahead and get our pinion gear installed. And we'll just put him on temporarily right at the end. Now we'll want to tighten that in once we get it installed. Also, I'm going to take this nut off. This I should have probably done just a bit earlier, but if you remember, we've got that hex, that hex uh, shape down there. This nut is going to go down there. And I'm just going to push it in nice and tight. And I'm going to drop just a little bit of glue on it so it just stays put like that and give it a little bit of spray. All right, so that's so that it doesn't pop out when we start to go um, screw into it. All right, there's our motor mount and it's ready to go. Our bearings are ready to go. And I think uh, what we'll do here is there's also this little piece in here and it's got a cover on it. We we'll want to take that cover off. It's just a clear piece of acrylic, but it has a really smooth finish and it will just be a um, kind of a 
an area that where the drive shaft will rub against and it will give it a nice smooth finish where there won't be any drag on the on the drive shaft so we're gonna we'll just put this on here just put a little dab of glue in the upper right well let's just put it right on the back here and then in the upper right corner of this guy right here and it doesn't have to be perfect just somewhere up there in the corner like that and you'll see why I've done that in just a moment <laughs> so all right let's get our box back out here and so we'll start to assemble this guy here so I'm gonna start with putting this on and you'll want to glue this at some point and um, but let's get it adjusted first before we do that the the bearings are going to go on so that the bearing is exposed to the outside so what's going to happen is I'm going to slide this down in here and this bearing will then be prevented this will prevent that bearing from ever coming out of that slot okay so we'll do that on that side and we'll do this one on this side so that the bearing is exposed it's going to go right there all right and then we're also going to put on the um, the drive gear and that will be adjusted at some point where we want it but just for now that we'll just put that on and then again these guys have a, a center section here that slides over like this and then it just pushes down okay and then this should be flush across the top like that and this is going to spin and that's what the marbles are going to hit and run through there there's two different types of rollers that we'll be providing one of them that's a solid across and one with the grooves in it um, they work exactly the same so I don't think there's any difference so anyways you'll get one or the other at this point and we may be making our own here in the near future if these are hard to come by so uh, right now this is a product that you can get at IKEA um, anyways but I don't know how long they'll have that in stock all right so that fits that's perfect so now let's okay and now we're gonna install the guts of the of the system so we'll start with the motor uh, the motor just goes in and you push it all the way forward this way slide it down and then um, the bottom you'll see there's little slots in it here and there and those will travel along those pieces that we put in and this is to hold it down so that it doesn't um, it doesn't move when or doesn't move very much there'll be a slight little bit of play in it all right so then we have our um, the bolt and the spring we'll put the bolt in from the outside and we'll put the spring on around it and then we'll just push this in and then this is going to meet up with that nut that we put in and then we just get our wrench and then start to screw screw it together and then what you're going to want to do to start we're going to screw this all the way down until the spring oops, until the spring is completely compressed right about there and I don't know if you can see that but down inside there where the spring is it's completely compressed right now the motor is as far over this direction as we can get it all right and now we're going to want to get this back installed and just line it up drop her in and then we're going to want to arrange these things in their proper spaces 
So this guy, now remember I haven't tightened down the Allen screws or the grub screws, whatever you call these. Um, I'm going to move them, I move this until I get it in where I want it. So let me take a little finesse. Ugh. Once it goes, it goes. All right. That might be pretty good. All right. And let's see, I may want to do just a little bit more. Okay. So I'm going to tighten that down just for the moment, make sure it doesn't move. So just put the, tighten these down. The main gear maybe may look a little different in the kit that you get. So just be aware of this. It will still have the same concept though. It will have some type of um, set screw that pinches down on the bar and it may be smaller or larger in diameter but pretty much all the same concept. It's going to attach to this and it's going to be driven by that piece right there. Okay, so I've got this. So this moves back and forth a little bit. Okay, and so I'm going to move this so it's more centered in the track. Remember we haven't glued this yet. All right, so that looks pretty good. I may have to go back just a little bit that way. All right, so I don't know if you can see that, but pretty much I try to put this exactly in the center of the track. Okay, so as the marbles come down, even if they're on the side, they'll have engagement and get shot out. Okay, all right, and then the next step is to get this moved back in place so that it's touching this gear right here. So let's start. We're going to loosen it up. That spring is going to push it back. And then you'll start to see it starts to get engaged. All right, that's as far as I'm going to go now. I'll do the rest of the adjustment when we get everything when we get everything wired up all right so the next step is simply to put this retainer in and it simply goes into the four holes that are down here like so and see, remember we put that little piece of plastic right there, so that if, if this ever comes in a bumps against there, it has a friction-free, in essence, uh, place that it's going to hit. All right, and then we put the last screw in, which is right here, goes through this hole, and then I'll probably see if I can get this on this way. And this takes a regular screwdriver. If yours may have an Allen screw on it, it just depends on what's really available at the time. But the concept is the same. It's just going to screw on. And I've used um, nuts that have the nylon inside of them so that they will uh, re they will not vibrate loose and just go somewhat tight like that and then this retainer now is in there solid it's not going to go anywhere you don't want to glue that in just put it in with the screw that way it is um, you can take it back out and we can pull pieces out we can upgrade motors we can change you know just about everything in here so don't glue 
this piece on and don't glue the lid on. All right, now let's get to the electronics. There's really only a couple parts. There is this piece here, which is the uh, plug-in or the receiver for the power supply. And then this is the speed control, okay? We'll start with the one on the bottom, and that's this guy here. They, it comes with a nut and a, um, a lock ring nut, a lock ring washer. So let's get that installed by threading through the bottom hole. The ring nut, lock ring nut goes on first, and then this on second. And then we'll go down, down here, and you'll want to hold your thumb on that, get that started. Like that, and then take this and give it a nice good tightening, and now we're set. So we have the wires for the power supply and the wires for the motor. So now the cap comes off of this, and there is also a retaining nut for this one. Now, this one is going to be tight, and it's I wanted to be able to thread this on so that it had a really good fit. And so you just twist it on like so. Keep just twisting, twisting, twisting until it gets as tight as it will go. Pretty much, I think that, uh, we'll just try, yeah, just like that. And I'd leave it at an angle like this so that we can easily install the, the wires. And then put on your retaining nut out here. Pretty much, again, with this guy. Okay, so now it's simply, oh, I forgot to show you. Let me undo that for a second. So on the back side of this unit, if you can see this, this one says DC in, and then it says the positive side is onto the outside here, and the motor and the positive side to the outside. So the positives, we're gonna use the red wire. Negative, we'll use the black wire. And then let's put this back on. And then, like we said, so the motor is going to go on this one right here. So we'll just stick that in the hole. And then we'll take our little screwdriver and tighten that down so it's nice and tight. Do the same for the red one. And tighten that one down. And then let's move this kind of out of the way. We'll just push it back up underneath like that. Okay. And then we'll do the same for these guys. This is kind of a, a hidden view here. So you got to get it in the, the hole right there. And get it tightened down. And give it a tug, make sure that it's not going to come out. And then same with this guy, make sure it's kind of clean. And stick them in the hole. 
right there. Give it a tug. All right, and then I'm gonna tuck those up underneath. All right, so there is the installation of <coughs> of the power of the speed control. And the speed control has a little um, little cover on it, and you can turn it on. You hear the click, and then it will go on full blast from slow to full. All right. So let's get our power supply out of our box. It's an American adapter, so if you're buying for out of the U United States, you'll have to send me a note so I can make sure we get the right power supply in there. And, and then we just take the, this unit right here, we plug it in. And we plug this in. I got a power connector right over there. And then the moment of truth. Will it turn on? Will it start moving? So we can go fairly slow and And so we're going to want to make an adjustment here until it sounds like it's getting a good connection. That is a bad connection. So let's get back in here. And then that is too tight. So let's loosen it up. And again. There you go. And that is the installation for the booster. The last piece that goes on, and again, do not glue this, would be the top. And you just line this up and clip it all in. This is a pretty tight fit, so you might have to fiddle with it for just a little bit. There you go, it's all enclosed. And then, ta-da. All right, well that's the, that's the instructions for this. And then of course, you just hook up your track to both sides using the clips like you would any other piece of track and you're all set. All right, well, thank you much.